another video in the series where I'm just doing first readings, where I read something by somebody I haven't read before a poem, or somebody I don't know or know very little of, and uh, just have an experience of it the first time do a reading, um, without all the great um, time spent that a teacher gets to spend, and you know, you get to go back through it multiple times and come up with a narrative to explain this one. I'm just reading. It's in Shenandoah. <clears throat> I just sorted through it and found it, and I saw it. It's volume 69, number two, in case you're wondering. Spring 20. Fairly new poem. Figs. And the only reason I went to it is figs. My family, grandfather, parents, they've all had fig trees. So this is something I've kind of grown up with, watching my daughters eat figs. So I'm pulled to it from that title. Sometimes things pull us to poems in weird ways. This one, Figs, Jim Whiteside. I don't know anything about Jim Whiteside. There's a little note about him. Originally from Tennessee, he lives in Oakland. So, southern poet. So I think to be a poet in the south and I grew up in Mississippi. He's a hard lot in a place that loves fiction. Figs, Jim Whiteside. It's just looking at the poem, I always like to look at the shape on the poem. It's fairly regular. Um, uh, three line stanzas. I always want it to be like Terzarima when I see that, but this one doesn't look like it. It's, it's not. It's okay. Terzarima or Villanelles, and it doesn't look like that either. Let's just go through it. I held the flute I, the way I might have held. A feather turning it to view each side. It's interesting just looking at the fruit of the fig before you're going to eat it. And fruits are not the most lovely looking things, especially right when you pull them off the tree when that's how we should eat them. I love the story of the fig wasp. Oh, that's fun to throw in there. Um, for those of you who don't know, the fig wasp pollinates the fig. It goes in and it dies goes in and dies inside the fig as it's pollinating. Other wasps come out of it as well. I always think of this when eat a fig like, oh, there's some, a dead insect that I'm eating as part of this. Agony, ag, agonidae. I don't know the Latin. Sorry, I just butchered that. How in each fig's center was a wingless, silent creature. There it is. And the wasp loses its wings on the way in. That's Silent, going towards pollination, disintegrated, eaten. I'd have to read up about the disintegrated thing. I always think of it as like a little bug there, eaten. Eaten by the fig, I suppose, as it grows. I don't know. That's what he means. Led by food to become food. Yeah. It's a nice repetition there. Led by food to become food. This was a nice line break when I still felt whole ownership of myself. Wow, that's an interesting shift there. Like, I held the fruit first part. I love the story of the fig wasp. And that moment when I was holding it, I still had full ownership of myself. So something's happened since that point. Before any part of me was undone. It almost feels like innocence versus what's happened afterwards. Like he's putting himself in the role of the fig, the fig wasp about to go into the fig and lose everything through this experience. This, what is ultimately a fairly traumatic experience, Oof, but a normal one, traumatic normal. Before I sat in rooms, I could only define by those who'd left them. Yeah, that's intense. Flightless and rended. So. The rooms he sat in, he sits in with those he can only define by those who've left him. So he's left alone by some bodies and people that were significant, right? He's flightless and rendered now. When I eat a fig, and you have this whole image of the fig wasp, like it's not something I want to think about, but I occasionally do, right? It leaves my throat sc scratchy and swollen. And the body whether suddenly 
or over time can develop such an aversion it's like playing off the div- an aversion of eating an insect but more than that held in place where old and new pain meet wow that's intense this is a um, really strong short poem with like a lot of intensity here this comparison of the you know fig and the fruit dying becoming silent becoming wingless losing its ability to fly to move disintegrating through this experience that's natural and at the same time traumatic like I said and pairing that off with the experience of a person having people leave because you know we don't know who it is love loved ones or whatever it is or lover we don't really know from this right but having that experience which is also very human and very traumatic no matter what right rendering this person flightless himself making his throat hurt so it's very you know like the thing that poets need the ability to speak to speak words rendering that a problem creating that aversion in the body right body where suddenly over time can develop such an aversion held in place where old and new pain where these pains meeting its aversion to the whole experience <sighs> wow that's a grab that's a great little point it's not a, typically like in a style that where I would jump out and say wow that's my thing um, this one really really works amazingly well so Jim Whiteside poet I don't know I will have to look up this poet um, looking at the bio it looks like just a chat book so far and then a couple of publications in you know typical traditional poetry places where's the look though 